ever assume that the frunk is actually the safest place to store your valuables because yeah you know people do that often think they can put their purses and whatnot in there but there's actually an emergency latch opening tab underneath this thing in a jig right here and it's there for emergency first responders to be able to open the frunk and be able to access this right here which is going to let them cut the power line the dc power to the entire car so they can get in if they need to work on the car and you know make some sort of an emergency rescue and if you're ever stuck inside here obviously um right in here <laughs> right in there there's a little lever to pop it open that's right but which i demonstrated in a <laughs> video this summer you did you fit perfectly in there <laughs> in a creepy way <laughs> but yes down there front right corner you can actually have frunks popping open left and right so put your groceries in there take your groceries out but don't don't put your purse and things in there so this is your level two adapter you'd use this at any standard public charging place like a charge point or somewhere like that what is it called <laughs> i can't remember it's like some really long j1772 which i would just call a level two adapter yeah. the average person but what we've discovered is that it actually fits back here perfectly yeah there's a little notch in there and it actually goes in vertically and is a perfect home for it so it doesn't roll around and you can have it in easy access in your driver door pocket and always be able to utilize it if you need to so this is a really cool little fact we discovered about the key fob there's actually a dead zone above the left rear wheel well area right here and you can set it there and actually turn your car off while having the key inside of it yeah it's pretty cool you can just uh, close the trunk walk away the car will actually be locked so unless you have a second key fob you can't open the car back up or of course you can use your phone to get back in the car but it's a it's a nice little feature that the service center utilizes all the time when they leave cars for customers and you can you know they'll leave the key in there for you and you can come and retrieve your car with your with your phone open the door get in retrieve your fob our but, car's actually turned off yeah <laughs> oh my gosh there you go the front is open but the screen turned off almost instantly that's a pretty cool catch so this is what I find really interesting. Say your key fob has a dead battery and you need to get into your car. Um, and you don't have your phone on you. And you don't have your phone <laughs> on you, exactly. And you're like- The world's coming to an end. What am I gonna do? <laughs> There's actually a little hidden spot right here. You can set it. Passenger side front corner, yep. And this would allow you to go ahead and yep. <laughs> get inside your car. Yes. So another feature with it as well, Kim, is with a dead fob, you can start your car as well. Of course, you'd need to start your car after you get in. And once you get the sippy cup out of the way, <laughs> you can put it right the there in the cup holder and start your car. And that can start your car for you as well. So Kim, you know when autopilot is engaged, it shows you obviously what the car sees in front of it. And it shows you trucks, it shows you cars, and it shows you motorcycles. Did you know that there's one final element that with 8.1 it now shows you you know it shows you a person now so if there's a person crossing in front of you do you want to demonstrate <laughs> no i'll leave that to other wonderful youtubers <laughs> but yeah Let's I, see if it actually I, stops. I, I bet you'd love to demonstrate <laughs> but no it would show a little person crossing in front of you uh if, if they were to dart out in front of you or walk across the street even at i would imagine uh you know red lights with with a crosswalk. So a Volvo XC90 just went by, and that actually has always been the car that I wanted before Tesla came out. And I would get that. Yeah! <laughs> I guess Liam agrees with me too. We would get that if it was electric. Yeah! Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> EVs all the way. <laughs> See, he's got his EV in his hands there. And I would get it if it was electric, 100% electric, because there is a partially electric. Point. Yeah, yeah. Right? There's one that gets you about 14 miles on a charge, and then it kicks in the gas. And um, gosh, I think it's somewhere in the mid 80s as far as price range, close to ninety thousand dollars. 14 miles is kind of a joke. <laughs> it is. It always blows me away that these battery little powered. battery powered remote control cars, besides the talking aspect, the uh, just the motor on it is is louder than the Model X's motors that can produce up to 700 horsepower. <laughs> yeah, this one's extra annoying because it talks every turn it makes. 
I was analyzing it this morning to see if I could take the speakers out of it. <laughs> I didn't realize that. So, <laughs> we have to return something that Sonic the Hedgehog brought us in the mail at Toys R Us. But look what we see, a white Model X. <laughs> so, we are going to park right next to them. <laughs> We're waiting, for, we're waiting the, uh, for that red car. We just decided, saw that he's already pulling out, so we're just gonna. Uh, be dorks. Be dorks. I know. Well, you know what? You see him somewhat here and there, but definitely not a not a daily occurrence. That's pretty funny. Typically, we try to park in the back of a lot, but I think they'll be careful. We'll make an exception <laughs> with Model X. All I think right they have it. the white interior, but it's perforated. He didn't want to let go of his remote control car. He wanted to bring it in. <laughs> you want to hold this? You can hold that. This is what we're returning because the 25 year Sonic special edition <laughs> is actually the same as the one that they've had available. It's the BMW i8. Look at this. Woo! Galling. <laughs> Where's the auto present? <laughs> You can actually engage autopilot in a standstill and notice that it's not option right there right now. Put your foot on the brake cam and press it hard until you get the hold button that pops up okay. and let go of it. As soon as you let go of it, you get those oh. two icons that pop up telling you that autopilot is available. And oh, I did not know I could do that. <laughs> so your foot is completely off and it's highlighting the car in front of you. It's blue now, meaning it's ready to, to track it. And Again, this is a feature I like to use a lot. Obviously, surface streets, autopilot, you've got to be uh, very alert and diligent with it. But yeah, it'll scoot up forward too. It'll just decide after a few seconds that it's time to go a little closer maybe. And um, it's set to go five over the speed limit right now. So there it goes by itself. And autopilot speed, did you know, is that the minimum speed for autopilot is 18 miles per hour. That's the lowest you can have autopilot engaged at. There is a maximum speed, and it's a nod to Back to the Future, at least we think it is. <laughs> maximum speed is 88 miles per hour. Calculations are correct. When this baby hits 88 miles per hour. Ah, what did I tell you? 88 miles per hour! I wouldn't be surprised if the Tesla team of engineers set it up that way. But 88 is your max speed. Isn't that what the loaner car had a max speed of 88 as well? No, the loaner car was restricted to 80. Oh yeah, yeah. that was really... The 80 period, not, not autopilot. Yeah. It was just, you can't go faster than 80 in some loaner cars. One more feature right here are these five cluster dome lights. See those rear three of the five are touch capacitive? The front two are not touch capacitive, so to turn on those dome lights, you've got to actually do it manually from these guys right there. There you go, Kim's turned off the rear three, and again, those don't do anything. <laughs> so I'm not sure why Tesla went with that, but you see how it works. So you notice the hood of the car, there is no windshield a fluid mechanism here to spray out. It's actually built into the blades themselves. And the blades, interestingly enough, move at different speeds for optimum coverage of this large glass. Um, obviously, the entire glass is not covered, but it's so sloped up top that at speed, you'll have the water just flow off. But you'll notice, there it goes. <laughs> it's coming in literally from the blades in a vertical form and uh, being left right there on the windshield. And obviously, we're doing this on a dry day, but you can kind of see how they're differing in speeds and the way they move for optimum coverage of the glass and also how they're uh, expelling the liquid out. Kim, did you know when you're using autopilot, the accelerator pedal doesn't actually move? It's uh, something that a lot of people have asked about, you know, do the pedals physically move? Because the steering wheel obviously does when you're engaged in autopilot, but the car actually manages the power directly from uh, the battery pack into the wheels without moving the accelerator pedal up, up and down. But what it does move is the brake pedal. So the brake pedal will, will be engaged to slow you down. Um, but it's something that people wanted to know. And yeah, the accelerator stays steady. It manages the power so directly. So it's not like one of those pianos that self-plays? <laughs> no. 
no. The steering wheel does that. <laughs> the quest for the best parking spot when it comes to the Model X and avoiding door dings. We're here in the back, back of the, the lot. back of the lot. <laughs> searching, searching, searching. You know what we came across here? It's a GLE 43 AMG, not a P90D. It's a Mercedes. It's a brand new one with a dealer tag too. But this is a direct Model X competitor. And the G-Class actually in the Model X this year in 2016 as December comes to a close. You're really going for it, Kim, aren't you? Job. <laughs> You're doing a good job. I'm gonna give he it is a... very, very picky about the parking. <laughs> we do have a door ding, but we do. there's really no, we parked far away. There's nothing you can do. Somebody came and it was a red car, obviously, because they left some paint behind and whack. They opened it right into the car. One. I'm pretty sure it happened while I was driving, but I always park in the very back. I, and I try to actually park somewhere like this so that I only have to expose one side. But I was saying this bi-turbo 4MATIC Mercedes right next to us is a direct competitor and I just read yesterday that the G-Class and the Model X in 2016 are going head to head as far as sales of how many cars Mercedes, G's, Mercedes has sold of G-Class versus Tesla of the X. And um, it looks like the Tesla is going to have more sales than this. Obviously they're a very high price, high performance. I think the performance of the Model X wins, right? right. <laughs> but it's not electric. It's not. Yeah. For me it's all about that. I know. It's like you can't even That's compare. why you like the XC90, but the range is just yes. child's play. Exactly. <laughs> J1772. J17172? How do you remember this stuff? Okay. It's barely any. Is this out of liquid? Whoa. <laughs> <laughs> Off road. <laughs> <laughs> 